is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. How you doing, my friend? You doing all right? I'm doing good. I'm waiting to see if today's a day the Heat sign Zion Poland or cut Zion Poland because it seems like he's been the ultimate offseason yo-yo for the Heat, which sure, which sort of shows you how the NBA offseason could be so much in flux. My, how we have fallen. Zion Poland. Gators, baby. Gators. We got a lot of Gator listeners out there. So, so we're done, right? Like, there's not going to be a – there's no way there's a move or anything, like, right, a big move or anything, right? It's There are no options, no nothing. This is what they're rolling with. So they're going to go all out with Jimmy and hope that either he has a good season that you then extend him or he has a bad season that he screws you over and takes the final year or he has a good season – and go somewhere else. Yeah, you know what? It's interesting, Big O, because everyone's been mentioning options one in A and C, that he he get he has a good season, gets the extension, doesn't get what he wants and leaves, but there's that middle area that you just pointed out, that what if Jimmy doesn't have it anymore, and now he stays around for a $52 million year? How do you adjust out of that? And again, let's give credit what credit is due, even though your head is almost too big for that baseball cap as it is. You mentioned about giving Jimmy a contract and an extension, what it could do down the road. We're seeing where it stands now. Let's not fully count him out. Let's see how this plays out again. When Jimmy's been available in the playoffs, and I know he wasn't available at all last year, they made the conference finals three the other four seasons. We'll see if he can redo that. It makes all the sense of the world for Jimmy to push all out and show, hey, at 35, I can be like Kevin Durant is at 36. I can still get it done. And then you know what, Big O? When he opts out, If I'm the Heat, I have a clean slate. I can decide to bring him back. I can decide to see what other options are. I could decide to see if Bam is more than a super role player. Or if the Heat's young kids need another year or two to grow, the heroes maybe, but certainly Jovic and Khalil Ware and Jaime Hakez and do that also. The Heat right now don't have the optionality, literally, until Jimmy Butler opts in or opts out of that final year. But at least we could see various game plans going. So, yes, I think mostly the Heat are where they are. We know there are 14 players. I joked about the two-way possibilities, what they might do with Drew Smith or Kashad Johnson or Isaiah Stevens or Zion Pullen. But they have some optionality there. But, yeah, they're going to roll with this, I think, intriguing mix of older and younger and see where they best wind up and where they best mesh. And, again, if Jimmy is good, the Heat are good because Jimmy's a really good player when Jimmy's good, but Jimmy has to show up. So I'm going to make the biggest deal out of it if he misses one of the first three games or two of the first five games. Because you know what, Big O, that'll set a tone of concern. I think no, it's definitely- the same shit all over again. You don't. Well, care. See, I, I can't. I can't use language like that in the print, but you can. So what I'm saying is, there's there'll be no better statement made by Jimmy Butler than if he plays, let's say, the first 10 games, every one of them. Then we can sit down, we can exhale. Wow, Jimmy might be in for the long run. But if he's going to start cherry picking, if he's going to go second night of a back-to-back, I never play in Minnesota, I'm not going against that team, then we're going to have concerns. Jimmy's going to dictate so much of this season, no matter Bam's growth, no matter Tyler's growth, no matter what Kalel Ware does. That's just what it is. And you know what? When you're paying a guy $50 million, it, that's the story of your team. So you sort of hope for the best, wish for the best, and then we'll see come camp which Jimmy Butler shows up. I will. I do say this. I, I like the veteran y- youth movement because since you really don't know where you're going next year, mm-hmm. it gives you the option that you're doing both right now and you're preparing yourself for what may happen next year, whether you have to deal with another year of Jimmy because he's broken down, which is kind of what I'm afraid of. Sure. Uh, but, you know, really – it's really about developing these young guys and they need, they need that break that that one young guy that they find becomes a star. That's what they and need. And they have one who appears trending that way in Jaime Hawkes and he got to work with the U S select team. We thought Tyler Hero was on that, on that track. Here's my thought. And I know I'm a lot different than a lot of your listeners here in the Acura Pembroke Pines report. I just enjoy having fun when I go to work and seeing players who were intriguing. Big O, I think you would agree. Jaime Hawkins Jr. is an intriguing, fun player to watch. Would you agree with that? Hell yeah. So is Jovic. 
Nikola Jovic is a young, fun. I mean, this guy's a, a, a 6'10, you know, unicorn for what he can do. I find him fun to watch. Hell, I find him fun to watch, except he was today in the Olympics and playing alongside Jokic. So I find that fun. And didn't you, at the least, Big O, find it intriguing in Summer League what Kalel Ware might do that he yeah. might sort of a Hassan Whiteside, but with his head on his shoulders correctly, right? right. Right, if he want if he wants to play basketball, it, it, it relieves Bam of some of that responsibility. Plus, I think you become better at blocking in the paint because that's not something that Bam does. He's not. He's six he's, nine. Sure. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Alonzo Mourning was six nine, and he would block every motherfucker that was in the paint. Okay, there, there's a difference between a dog and no dog. Okay, and Bam doesn't bring that dog in that area. Alonzo Mourning, you could tell him he's 6'9". He wasn't going to take any of that shit. He was going to block whoever he could. He was going to block. Not only was he going to block it, he was going to block it and keep it inbound. That, that's that's how good Zoe was. So, to me, it's different. But with Khalil Ware, you, 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 you get better inside, I think, defensively. Because he goes after blocks. And that's what I like, where Bam right. just does not go okay, after. Okay, but Big O, let's... let's Let's thing. pull it back to this initial conversation. One more thing for your intriguing okay. that you okay. missed. It. I think they got a dude that has a little bit of Drazen Petrovic in him. You, you didn't Lawson. mention it. Yeah. He's yeah. intriguing, but he also went in 44 for a reason. So I have to wait on that. Yeah, I have okay. to wait on that, but he but could I, be. But I like his aggressive nature is what I'm saying. I, I when, when I'm watching him, He's got a little dog in him, so right. I don't. I don't know what's left. I don't know what's more. I don't know if the kid's going to become a player or not. But I'll tell you something: Palel Larson is a guy that I want to see more of because maybe there's something there, dude. And you got to agree, also. And I know you have your thoughts on who he is and what he is. But Bam Adebayo is fun to watch because he yeah. goes all out on both ends. He might not be the most skilled offensive player. He might not be the most aggressive big man. But he That's plays hard. He does the right thing. So what I'm saying is, I think, I think he's he I think he's skilled. I just don't okay. think. I just don't think he has. He 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 doesn't want it all the time, like to score. That's my problem. And you know, the last time we had the conversation, you're like, well, maybe if he takes that, I'm like tired of waiting for that already. Either you are that, or you're not that. And that's what he hasn't proven to me. You know what I mean? And it's year in and year out, and year in and year out with that. Maybe if you put the kid in the middle where and he goes outside and maybe he's forced to score more. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm kind of tired of waiting for that. Either you are it or you're not. And that's but, usually. But my point being, Hakez fun. Jovic yes. fun. Where yes. potentially fun. Bam yes. enjoyable because of the effort. So it exactly. comes out to Jimmy. And you know what? Jimmy's not always fun to watch. And Jimmy shows up and sometimes goes through the motions. And that's obvious. So what we need to see is Jimmy fully engaged. Right. I don't know if he can be because when's the last time in the regular season he has been? It right. has been years. It was down the stretch in the bubble when they were desperate and they had a win and he came in and he was his own private reserve there and had nothing else to do. Couldn't shoot commercials. Couldn't, well, I was going to say couldn't sell coffee. Couldn't sell coffee to the general public in the bubble. He was more focused there. So a lot of this is on Jimmy. And, I trust Jimmy in the playoffs. I have to learn to regain trust in Jimmy during the regular season yeah, because that's been taken away. That's been robbed. How many times have you sat at home or if you're at the arena, everyone out there listening, and you didn't know if Jimmy's going to play that night. And you're going through Twitter. Who's playing? Who's playing? What are the starting lineups? Wait a minute. Hawkins is starting, not Jimmy. you got to stop that. you got to give people what they want. You've got to show up every day. My thought is, and I might stand alone, when you're making half a million dollars a game, whether you play or not, it might behoove you to actually play. Yeah, no, of course you have to play. I mean, come on, dude. It's just, listen, the conversation has to be, Hey, Jimmy, you try in the regular season. We can be a top four seat. You don't try. We're going to the play in again. And we're desperation. Not, yeah. I mean, it's just now, do you want to keep doing the play in stuff? Cause we can't, you know, the, the, the thought that, oh, we'll play right out of the play-in. That's bullshit, dude. No, that's, that's, that's playing with that's fire. That is playing ever. with fire. Yes. That's never been the norm in the NBA, and it never right. will be the norm. And I know that LeBron pulled it off for a year or two in Cleveland. I, I get it. I, I get he kind of didn't take it, and 
and he kind of, and he got away with it. You know what I'm saying? But overall, it's just you have to take the regular season somewhat serious. I agree. And and if you're the Heat, you can't afford to be eight or seven, dude. I agree. You need to be at five or four or three. You need to have some home games. You need to give yourself an advantage. You need to give yourself a week's rest when the season's done. Great Jimmy, point for an older roster. And you yep. need to give yourself a chance not to face the number one seed in the first round, but play the number one seed in the third round when you've regained your mojo and Jimmy's back to being Jimmy and maybe the other team's tired and maybe someone else over there is injured instead of over here is injured. So I agree with all of this. To me, it starts in training camp. I want to see what Jimmy Butler shows up. But if he shows up as an independent contractor who's just contracted for the playoffs, man, I don't know what the Heat are going to do. It's a tough spot for Eric Spolster because no one tells Jimmy what to do. So we have to see what Jimmy's going to do. I agree. And a long two years because then that means he'll opt into the player option and take the $52 million because – Or get they? traded. Or maybe get traded. I know you could say no, but Big O, you know one thing about this NBA. Back There's here, always a no, trade. Here, if he has another one of the years he's had the last two years, he's untradeable. Unless you point. take someone else's money, some different money. Maybe you do something like that. You take on some other player, you reform it, a younger player from a more desperate team. LeBron wants to win one more year, you do that. But that's down the road. First, let's see how Jimmy shows up. We literally, I almost feel like I have to run this on Sentinel, the daily Jimmy energy meter. Is Jimmy engaged? Yay. Is Jimmy not engaged? Not so yay. That's really who he is. It's, it's, kind, it's kind of strange. And we, and we really have three quarters of a season, right? Because... If he's kind of not himself, it's not completely committed or whatever, then you're going to part ways in the trade trading deadline so you don't have to pay $52 million on the I back agree. end. I agree. The first half of the season is essential to the Heat. I still don't know if it's essential to Jimmy because he still knows he has two years and $100 million left that someone will pay him from somewhere. So it's going to be really interesting. It's, it's almost going to be as interesting, Big O, as what he says is what he does because that will say how engaged he is. If he talks after a loss, is always just one of 82, then you're right back to where you were this past season. I agree. Yeah. All right. What do you got going on in the Sentinel so folks can check you out? Well, today, three of the four Olympic Games are over. The U.S. is going to take on uh, overmatch Brazil. So it's kind of interesting. Canada is out today. Wrote about how Serbia won their game. Nikola Jovic was ill, didn't play. Hopefully he's back on Thursday when they probably will play Team USA because that'll be interesting. Our old friend, Evan Fournier, who we sort of forgot about, destroyed a really talented, yeah, candidate team today. So I, I, I tweeted out, it was almost like the magic version of Evan Fournier that was out there. So the Olympics are hitting their crescendo. Semifinals on Friday, bronze and gold medal games on Saturday. We'll see if Bam comes home with the gold, if Spolstra comes home with the gold. One thing I wrote about today also, I don't know how much Olympics you've been able to catch or not. A lot. But Dwayne, Dwayne Wade's really good. Dwayne Wade, as an analyst and doing the broadcast alongside Noah Eagle, has been really good. I think he's found his place, a nice mix of humor and, and, and of analysis. So I wrote a little bit about that also. And then just looking at the sort of the heat situation, I know I kidded when I started our Accurate Pembroke Pines report about Zion Poland, but it will be interesting to see which the next group of young players that the Heat will try to cultivate. Because you can say what you want. Oh, Ira, it's just an Exhibit 10. But so was Caleb Martin. I'm rather a two-way, but so was Caleb Martin. So was Duncan Robinson. Usually they find one. Maybe it's Kashaw Johnson, the undrafted forward out of Arizona. Maybe it winds up being uh, 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 Drew Smith. I know we kid about that. Maybe he finds his legs. Maybe he doesn't. You can never be too old for that. Maybe right. it's Josh Christopher, the kid who stepped up with his streak scoring at the end of camp. Here's the difference. We're watching the Dolphins now. Big O, correct me if I'm wrong on this. A NFL camps, about 95 players is the early limit. That's about the number, right? Something like that, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. and they only keep 53. So you're talking about a ton of names you're never going to see again after they get injured in the exhibition games. The nice thing about the NBA is the Heat can keep up to 18 players, aren't allowed to bring more than 21 to camp. So you might joke about the names I mentioned, but every guy has a real shot. There are not throwaway players. I like that the NBA does that. Has a 21-player even off-season limit. So it's not like this college program with a gazillion walk-ons. You don't know who's who. Two guys are wearing the same number. So I think the Heat will give us another young player, intriguing player, maybe even an Isaiah Stevens, the undrafted guard out of Colorado State. But the Heat developmental pipeline has been real good. And like you pointed out, think about the draft pipeline, the last four drafts. Say what you want about Bam. Hell of a pick in 17, late lottery. Tyler Hero, hell of a pick in 19, late lottery. For where he was drafted outside the top 10, or would you rather have Justice Winslow? And if 
it, it's a decent pick, but the set, but the the extension he didn't live up to what, it. On what of an average salary? Okay, but I'll go there with that. Then you then you had Jovic, then you had Jaime Hawkes. Now you have Kalel Ware and a player you like in the second round and Pella Larson. So they they've done that. They brought that along. They've given you that. And I think this year Eric Spolstra gives the kids a chance because you know what? If Jimmy really is that much older, then I would say this to Jimmy. Jimmy, instead of not showing up 20 games, show up every game and give me your bust your ass best for 30 minutes. I'll cover the other 18 minutes of your position. That's what I would say. And let these kids go out, use their fouls, play hard and do it that way. I need Jimmy every night. I don't need him for 40 minutes because Jimmy Butler's best 30 minutes should be good enough on this team. No, and there are days where he plays, but he really is not playing. He's just kind of going through the motions, and those are bullshit days too. He cannot. Totally, do, I totally that he, agree. That he cannot afford a mediocre average Jimmy. But he they need they need Jimmy buckets. They just need Jimmy buckets. If they have Jimmy buckets, then they'll be. Are they a championship caliber team? Hell no. no. But. They'll scare the shit out of anybody. They'll contend. They'll contend. And you know what the expression when you say someone's not all there? There have been too many nights last season, even before, when Jimmy wasn't all there. They need him all there. At that pay scale, at the Jimmy Butler and Orlando Alzagari pay scale, you have to show up every day for work. I just think of Alonzo Mourning. And he didn't know any other way. He didn't exactly, know any other way. Exactly. You try to tell Zoe to take a night off or cruise in a game or something, and he would look at you with some nasty ass look. Like that's you know, or PJ Brown or any of these kind of cats, bro. Dan Marley, Tim Hardaway, you just ran long. Yeah, you just don't tell these people. It's a different. It's a different time. It's a different, different time. Those guys. Those guys were like playing for their food. Now it's about playing for your salary and playing about body preservation for your next contract and playing for your endorsements. It's a different time. I don't love it, but you have to accept it because that's what it is. Yeah, there was a lot more pride in the game before, unfortunately. All right, follow. Game. Yeah, follow him on Twitter at Ira Heatbeat and catch his work there at the South Florida Sunset. No, Ira, as always, thank you. We'll catch up next week. Catch up next week. We'll do our Olympic review, see how Bam and Spo did. Thanks, Big O. You got it. There you go. And hopefully Spo will be the next Olympic coach. Accurate Pembroke Pines, they got it going on, baby. Yes, Larry Schlossberg, number one volume sales dealership. In the Southeast United States, you can't beat that, baby. 15601 Pines Boulevard, just off of I-75 in Pines. And, folks, the ZDX is in. You can get uh, with uh, lease, conquest, or loyalty, $469 a month. For all approved leases, $499 a month. Get electrified, baby. Over 320 miles to the full charge. 2.9% financing for 48 months. That is a cool deal. The 2024 Integra, we still have a few of those. You can get it for $319 a month, 3.9% financing for 60 months. The MDX, we've had two of those in our house. We only have one right now. But the 2024, you can get it for $479 a month, 3.9% uh, financing again for 60 months. Go check it out. They've got a, a lot that is overflowing. And the beauty about an overflowing lot is you get to pick the car you want, the color you want, the style you want, the model you want. But most importantly, the price you want, the best deal in town. You get it at Craig Zins, Acura of Pembroke Pines. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.